Cause when I party in the club I go hard Put the drinks on the back of my car VIP living like a rock star Now she dripping on me like some little bars Sexy mama keep throwing back shots Just don't spill it on my Gucci while we dance By the time we leave this club you know what's up Call my driver yo come pick me up Formerly known as Nathan but now Starboy Nathan and yeah. also NFG man You know we're gonna address it from the beginning man yeah. Like um, why they change the name man? Um it wasn't so much of a name change as an expansion on what was already there like i didn't want to just kind of change it up and just be someone new or different but basically just wanted to add to it like the one of the main reasons was it's more definable you can search it better on google and everything like that it's like before you could just put in nathan and tons of things will come up madness is dent dentists like medical people whatever like whatever you wanted like you know what i'm saying so starboy nathan is is just me there's no other starboy nathan so i feel like that's kind of more it's the best thing for me to do and i'm loving it and people are responding to it i think the timing was right as well because it was it was organic it wasn't like let me change my name you know what i'm saying it kind of came together and was like yeah right it actually makes sense so it feels like that as well which is a good look. So when was the official like um, sort of adaptation of the name then? When did it actually happen? Um, Last year. Last year. Well, yeah, it was just kind of last year. We was thinking, we were just revising the whole thing and it's a name that I had in the pipeline for about four years. I wanted to, I have a call like my rep. We were actually going to change the name of my record label to Starboy Records and do clothing, Starboy, Starboy clothing as well. Mm-hmm and it just ended up being the name before all of that because i was that was an idea i had from like three or four years ago and then he was talking about it he was like how about starboy nathan and it kind of stuck little black dress with a body on 10 know you want to dance with me we could drink all night got the bottles on ice if you want to get misty i love it when you dip low stilettos on tiptoe girl you know exactly what we're doing tonight coming to my room 2006 and i remember first hearing that track and i was like you know what this is something man you know what Thank I mean? You, and, and it was like sort of the darker era of this UK urban thing because, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of artists are getting signed at the moment, getting the top tens, top fives, number ones and all that. But that era there, it was a dark era, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you know. <laughs> nah, joking. But yeah, it was, man. I'm, that's why when I look at the music scene right now, I can't be anything except positive and happy, man, because like it's so b- vibrant right now. And like all of the music is of a certain standard as well the vocals the production the songs themselves are all at a certain level and i think that's the best thing I, i'm as I, as you said when i first came out i'm from the time where there was one or two people there was me there was lamar and it was fundamental and that's it like and estelle do you know what i mean and 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 we were all trying to break through and it wasn't happening we weren't all getting top fives and top 20s or anything like that it was a very very big struggle and like it's just that persistence that kind of got everyone through and the best thing about it is that all of the people that are blowing up now the end dubs tiny tempers retro free twos um estelle with her success jay sean with his success all these people have been around for seven eight nine years before and it's 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 that was really really making the game what it is right now that people have been working for it for a long time so it makes it even better people appreciate it they're happy for it and they're trying to keep it going and same thing with like you know the retro free twos and the scorches and the ghettos and that we've all been on the scene f- since day so because i'ma have a hangover tomorrow morning i'ma have a hangover yeah i'ma wake up with a hangover sip it till i got you know the game's over yeah i'ma wake up with a hangover tomorrow morning i'ma have a hangover just about to release your second album Mm -hmm. but for those that don't know man they don't know about nathan they don't know about nfg they don't know they only know about starboy nathan yeah give us a snapshot into the musical history of nathan it can be summed up by the, the the first album which is called masterpiece it was masterpiece was a collection of every the best stuff i've written since i've been born like when when i made my album when i made the first album by the time i finished the album i was i was 19 and it was like all of my best work is like my life's work up until that point which is not a lot obviously because i was young and i was a teenager but 
example is that it, it contained the first song I ever wrote, which is a song called What's Your Name. It would contain the first song I ever got like proper radio play, which is Come Into My Room. The first love song I ever wrote, which is a song called They Can't Take Me Away. Like, do you know what I'm saying? It was my first up tempo, Snatch and Masterpiece Part 2. And then Masterpiece Part 1, which was the title track. It was the reason why I named the album Masterpiece. That album is a very, very special album to me because like, it was just, it was me at the time. I was just, I was getting to make music. I was so happy that I was getting to make music. That was, yeah. Pick up, pick up. Thank you, G. Oh, it's live, 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 live. Yeah. I was so happy that I was getting to make music. I was just, I was loving it. I was just making song after song and, and kind of, you know, Matt R. Kelly was one of my big influences. So there was one day that I went into the studio and I, I was like, I want to make a song that's a mix of R. Kelly and Marvin Gaye. Like, I was like, if Marvin Gaye was alive now, what type of love song would he make? And then I ended up writing this song called The Right Way. And it was, it was, it was, I really, really enjoyed making an album and I look back on it now and people call me, like I got a call like last week and it was like, someone said to me, I was listening to your Masterpiece album today, man. That album was mad, you know, like had bare jams on it. And I'm like, that's that like, one of the biggest compliments ever because it got released like three years ago now. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and a lot of people strive to make an album that people can come back to. Do you know what I mean? The album that's not just of the moment and that's not just current, you know, and that's why I'm really happy with the album and I always will be. I like the way you're walking to me, girl. Your body's talking to me, love the way your hips go. I've been drinking so much, now I really wanna touch, baby. Take another sip, so put the bottle to your lips slow. Baby, we can have a strip show. Girl, you know exactly what we're doing tonight. What's taking so long between albums? Alright, the main reason why it took so long between albums is because I felt like I did everything I could do with Hang um with Masterpiece, the album. And I didn't wanna I didn't want to just go through the same process again and then make the same album because it's not going to be the same album. It's not going to have the same sentiment. So I was like, instead of trying to duplicate Masterpiece, making Masterpiece Part 2, the album, Volume 2, and um, just using the same formula, I, I wanted to go different places, grow, work with new people, kind of grow as an artist and then try and make a different an album from a different place and that's what i did with 3d I, I, I like just grown so much made so many different new friends and new people and got experience as a writer as well and that's kind of helped me make this new album 3d and plus this one's special to me in a whole different way it kind of sums up it's like affirming the fact that i'm still able to release music and i'm still in the game after like being in it for eight years and like you know a lot of people would not get a chance again after they released the album a long time ago. The first song came out. Coming to my room got promoted in like 2004. So it's it's been a long time. And 3D stands for um, determination, dedication, and desire. And it's just like, that's what kept kept me here. That's that's the reason why I'm here right now. So it's, just, it's a special album to me in that way as well. Cause I'ma have a hangover Tomorrow morning I'ma have a hangover Yeah, I'ma wake up with a hangover Sip until I drop, you know the game's over Yeah, I'ma wake up with a hangover Tomorrow morning I'ma have a hangover we just talking about the album beforehand 3d determination yeah. dedication and desire mm -hmm. now, that says a lot with that title man was there ever times like sort of you had a lot of time between albums did you ever contemplate like quitting or doing something else outside of music the hardest thing that has been for me is that i knew i was never gonna quit it's just like what's gonna happen in it like it's so peak like sometimes like you can feel like you exhausted all of your options so you're like what am i gonna do because i'm not gonna quit like do you know what i'm saying it's like so it gets it gets even more difficult because a lot of people like the hardest part is when they're like there's nothing else i can do and then they quit i'm gonna have to try and do something else whereas if you actually have exhausted all of your options but you decided you can't quit it's harder because there's nothing else that you can do so it's a De determination and dedication and desire is the reason why i decided to call the album that is because as i said it's like the reason why i'm here right now the reason i'm able to make music mm. and all of those sentiments come out in one song or in, or another on the album as well so the current 
UK R&B scene, man. Yeah. What's what's Starboy Nathan's take on it, man? Because you know, there's not a lot of um, actual R&B mm-hmm. being made. There's a lot of dance stuff at the moment as yeah. well. And I see that you're kind of keeping it more conventional, man. But, but what's your take on the current UK R&B scene? Um, first of all, I think there's I think it's better than it's ever been because there's better artists. You can talk about Tayo, you can talk about McLean, you can talk about Tale, you can talk about Loic, you can talk about Bluey, you can talk about myself. Like, that's more than it's ever been. Mm-hmm. When you really check it, that's more than it's ever been. I think the the step that needs to, the fact that people's ears are open to it now is the best thing that's that, that we can hope for. Now we need to use the fact that people's ears are open to do you. That's why with like Hangover, I'm doing me. Like I'm doing a song that just epitomizes me. It's fun. And for the first time, even like on Masterpiece, there wasn't really any songs like Hangover. And that I've grown as an artist because like I know how to put my personality into music now. Like when I'm going out and I'm having fun and it's just a vibe. So I think now for all of the artists, because we see like I talk to Tele a lot, I talk to Loic as well. Like, and, and it's like because we see an opening, you want to try and exploit the opening. You want to try and get people they know you know you can get a number one or something like that if you have the right song so you try and exploit the opening but then sometimes you can end up making a song that's tailor-made to try and get on radio then the song don't get played on radio then you've alienated your original fans that you had and you're in a great no one ain't no one ain't rocking with you that don't make no sense in it i was never gonna do that that's why i was like do you know what let's i want to keep it real like diamonds for me is like a step on from do without my love in those songs like it's that same nathan hangover is a slightly new nathan as well but it's not just dance don't get it twisted i do have those dance songs on my album and stuff like that like uh because i want to show that I, I can tear that down as well it's a it's a thing where you want to you want to bring your own creativity to that field as well but i don't want to i don't want to make other people's type of music to try and break through you know what i'm saying which is why I'm happy that I got to do a video for Hangover. I got to release a song like Hangover. And I think like people are kind of looking at R&B like it's a dirty word. Like that don't make no sense because when Usher do, um, does music, people want to hear it. When Chris Brown does it, they want to hear it. But from the UK people, it's like it's got to be dance music. No, 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 no. I ain't on that. So I'm trying to keep it real. Oh. No cue, go true, straight through the entrance. And now I'm looking for a shot, no death wish. Whoa, I said a VIP is like down in street. Do you wanna get elected? I got the juice, babe, and a beverage. And everything's on ice like a pendant. Whoa, and now I'm looking for some wretches. I'm trying to strike, don't be trying to get defensive. You know, you got the latest single out at the moment, Hangover, featuring Wretch Free 2. Yeah. Definitely bubbling nice. And, yeah, you know, man, a lot of people talking about it, man. Break down the single, man. Is that from True Experience? Um, to be <laughs> honest, you see with Hangover, I don't even drink. People that know me know I don't even drink that much. I might sip a vodka and cranberry or a disarano with apple juice. That's the wave, by the way, disarano and apple juice. Um, but the disarano and Welch is great. That's the Starboy drink. Like, if you know, if you de- if you get the disarano and Welch is great, yeah, that's the Starboy mix. Like, that's mine. Yeah, you can have it though. You can taste it. It's live, in it. Like straight. Trust me. But anyway, yeah. Um, I don't really drink that much after saying all that. But um. It, it, it's just about going out and having a fun night like uh, last year it was i was in the club alto with me wretch chipmunk and we was all raving it up and it was just we just all let go and it was just a fun night in it and that night inspired that song it was just about just just um, carefree and then when i asked wretch to do the tune i was like can you put that night that we had in alto put that on the tune and he did it he killed it he killed it so I was happy. Wretch is, Wretch is sick, by the way. What a great thing to happen to UK music, man. Wretch Free 2 taking oh it to the next days. level, man. Don't you, like, that, that's the main thing about the UK right now that I love. Like that Before, there was people that deserved to get certain places that wouldn't. And it's still like that. But I'm so happy to see Wretch Free 2 that deserves success. Get success. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and it's a next step in the evolution, man. Exactly. Hangover, I ain't leaving till the sun comes up. Oh.